Eden Beeps, good evening everyone. How's everyone doing? Hopefully you guys are all doing well. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, like, share, subscribe. Boy, there is a lot to talk about, a lot. So uh, put your feet up, this could be a long video. I've literally just got back from Vegas. I was there for Conor Ben versus Pete Dobson, as you guys know. We are obviously gonna talk Conor Ben. The week before that, I was in Phoenix for Mangia versus Ryder. We're gonna talk what next for both of those guys as well. Obviously the Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk situation. The fight is on, then the fight is off. Now the fight is back on again, May 18th. I think it's just been announced as well that Bivol will take on Baturbiev June 1st. We're gonna talk about what next for Boatsy after that win against Dan Aziz. What next for Dan Aziz as well, hopefully. He's in some big fights still. Was it a slip? Was it a knockdown? Probably both knockdowns. Uh, ben Whitaker getting a lot of stick, a lot of stick, which I don't really like. We're going to talk about that as well and why I don't like it. And we're going to go through whatever other news has popped up in the last, I don't know, week or so. Any big news in the last week or so, we'll talk about that as well. So where do we start? Let's start. Uh, let's go all the way to the back, actually. Let's start very quickly, Mangia Ryder, because that's where I was in Phoenix. By the way, amazing crowd, amazing crowd. And what made it more amazing, that crowd for me, is that they were all there. I think there was about 12,000 in there, maybe a bit less than that. But I would say about eight or 9,000 were in there from six o'clock, from six o'clock, the prelims, which doesn't happen over here. And I was talking to Barry Jones about this. I'm like, why is that not a thing over here? Like we only really see people turn up for the main events. I mean, on the other occasion, unless there's a big ticket seller on the undercard, they might turn up. But 90% of the time, it's only the main events. And um, in Phoenix, and bear in mind, it wasn't local fighters on that card. They all turned up. I don't know if it's just because they don't get a lot of fight cards in Phoenix or they're just really big fight fans or they want to get their money's worth. But they were there from six o'clock, which was crazy. Uh, to the fight, Mangia just looked really sharp, looked really good. Um, I think I said in the, in the build-up to the fight that how much is left of John Ryder? That was a tough fight against Canelo. It was a brave fight, a brave performance, but how much did that fight take out of him? And I think we saw from the first couple of rounds, it took out of him a lot. And not, that's not to take anything away from Mangir because I thought Mangir looked really good, right? But I think maybe Ryder's run his race, especially at the top level. Um, like I think Ryder should retire. I think he's um, achieved a lot in the sport. He should have been world champion. I thought he beat Callum Smith when they fought a few years back. And he's had some good performances. And hopefully with the Canelo fight, with the Callum Smith fight, and now with this Mangir fight, hopefully he's made some good money as well. Um, but yeah, I, I think enough's enough. For Mangir, um, he's not going to get a Canelo fight. Uh, Canelo, I think, will fight Jamal Charlo in May. And then there's a lot of talk in America about Canelo versus Crawford uh, in September. I think I did it. I said this on my last video I did. I said, what next for Crawford? And I said, I think it will be Canelo Crawford. Um, so I'm expecting Crawford to have a fight in between uh, and maybe test the waters at a higher weight class, maybe 160, and then obviously take on Canelo and what will be just, I don't know. I mean, one of the biggest fights we've seen in years at 168. So if you're Mingir, you're probably looking at Belanga. It's always good, right? Puerto Rico, Mexico wars are always good. Um, there's David Morrell, which is a tough fight, Benavidez and Bealy. There's so many good fights out there for him at 168. So yeah, look, great to be in Phoenix. I stayed there for a few days. I'm not really the biggest Vegas fan, so I didn't go to Vegas straight away. I decided just to chill in Phoenix, hit a couple of gyms, uh, talk to a few people, and then I made my way to Vegas uh, for Conor Ben versus Pete Dobson, which a lot of people are talking about. Um, this one has kind of blown up the boxing internet, not the world, because boxing's only that small in the world. But in terms of the boxing internet, so many people are talking about this performance. They're saying things obviously like Conor Ben's power's gone. Um, and look, I get it. I, I understand it. Um, especially considering prior to the fight, speaking to a few people um, and their predictions, it was Conor Ben was going to win in one, which I thought was ridiculous. Uh, Conor Ben's going to stop him early. And when that doesn't happen, people then will question you. People will question you. Like we can put all the, I'm going to get to everything, trust me, but just on that, on that, if you predict you're going to stop a guy early and you don't, we're going to ridicule that performance a little bit. I know Conor Ben after the fight was talking quite, uh, you know, it was a good performance. He, Pete Dobson didn't come to do anything. Pete did. Pete did in the first few four rounds. Pete maybe was, I think, looking at Conor a little bit. 
you know, because he knew that Connor was going to come out like a freight train. He kind of just stood there and took what Connor had to throw. And then sort of the second half of the fight, start landing some really good shots. Like he landed some really good uppercuts, some big right hands. He, 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 I wouldn't say he bullied Connor, but he made sure that Connor felt his size in the corner a few times. I thought Pete Dobson did okay. I really did. Um, I think we just maybe expected a bit more from Connor Ben, which is fair to expect, right? I mean, Pete Dobson's good, but Pete Dobson's a good club fighter. That's what he is. He's not a ranked fighter. Yes, he was unbeaten, 16 fights, 16 wins, nine knockouts, but he's not a high level fighter. So you're expecting Conor Ben to look really good against those kids. And um, it wasn't the case. And you could maybe say the same thing about the last guy he fought. Um, Orozco, was that his name? I think that's his name, right? But Orozco was a bit bigger. So was Pete Dobson. This thing about um, Conor Ben not knocking out people and not having the power anymore. <laughs> I think maybe people have kind of got it wrong a little bit with this one. Like, Conor Ben has good power. He doesn't have, oh my God, power. He has good power. It's not Javante Davis power. It's not that, is it? But it's good power. But you, you almost have to be careful and, uh, and look at the people that he knocked out as to why you're giving him this kind of power tag. Like, uh, Van Heerden, washed. Washed. Like, I like Van Heerden, but he's washed. Algeria, right at the end of his career, done. And he's a 140 guy. Those are the two big knockouts. I, like, being able to knock out those guys and not being able to knock out his last two opponents means nothing. Like, it means nothing. It's not like, it's not like he was knocking out young cats coming through. Like, oh my God, starching young mid-20 cats that are good and then struggling against those guys. And then you could say, okay, look, there's a problem here. I can see there's an issue, but you're knocking out Van Heerden and Algeria. Like, he didn't knock out Formella. He didn't knock out Granados. See what I mean? So it's not like it's a case of he had this power, this, and now all of a sudden the power's gone. Like, he knocked out guys for me that he should knock out. Like, should he should starch Algeria. And he certainly, certainly should starch Van Heerden. Um, so, I, I, look, again, I see what people are getting at, but I, I'm more looking at it like, he came up against two guys. Pete Dobson's tough. He's not 40. <laughs> and he's a bit big. Uh, Orozco, tough, not 40, not washed, and he's a bit big. Maybe it's just that. Do you know what I mean? Maybe it is that. Again, I get, trust me, when I say I get it, I get what you guys are getting at, but I don't know if it is that with Conor Ben. The, the thing with me with Conor Ben, and I, I was speaking to, who was I speak? Darren Barker about this. I said, when you go the route that Conor Ben's gone, I, I don't know where you are. Like if someone were to ask me right now, Addy, where's Eka Usman? I'll say British level. I know, I've seen the route. It's a, it's, it's a traditional route he's taken. So I see it. When you go these kind of routes like that, I have no idea where you are. So I don't know, I don't know if I'm watching Conor Ben um, and I'm watching a British level fighter, a European level fighter, or a fringe world, I have no idea what I'm watching. And I sometimes think that's the biggest problem with Conor Ben, or that's the biggest problem with us not understanding what we're watching with Conor Ben. Because if you remove the name, if you remove sort of the way in which he talks, this bravado, we would have no idea where this guy would be because he hasn't done the traditional route. Sometimes, like, sometimes I get why fighters don't do the traditional route, right? If you're a top Olympian, um, you don't need to do that route. And we're going to talk about Ben Whitaker as one of those guys. But you don't need to, you could, you could literally jump, right? Why hang around? If you don't have that amateur background, sometimes you might need to do that to know exactly where you are so it's then easier to match make you. It's then easier. Because um, I, I don't know what they do with Conor next. I don't know how they match him. I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. I know Conor Ben's calling out all the biggest names in the world. And to be fair, they're all digging him. I saw Devin Haney dig him. I saw Javante Davis dig him. I saw Errol Spence dig him. Um, who else? I've seen so Josh Kelly's digged him. S smaller fighters, if you like, like Michael Mickinson's digged him. <laughs> it's a tough matchup next. Like, I wouldn't mind seeing, not that again, but that kind of level again. I wouldn't mind seeing it like a Blair Cobbs was ringside. I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing that. Honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing that. Someone like that, just so I can kind of have a gauge as to where you are. But back to this kind of power knockout thing, because oh, every, look, it's obvious what people are saying. People are saying, okay, look, prior to the, the uh, drug testing, Conor Ben was starching everyone. He wasn't. 
He wasn't starching everyone. That's just, he, he wasn't. Um, again, didn't starch Formella, didn't starch Granados. It wasn't starching people. The people he starched, and all due respect to those people, again, I'm not a fighter, I don't want to dig out anyone. Starched Van Heerden in Algeria. Van Heerden. Starched him. Algeria, 140 guy, end of his career. Starched him. Um, again, it wasn't like he starched sort of in your prime 30-year-olds. Do you know? So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, what I do know is Amma Williams. Um, well, well, by the way, I'm going to get someone in to have a, a proper discussion about Conor Ben and what everyone thinks because um, I do think it's... It, it, it's a... It, it's a, it's a very, it's not even a delicate, it's a very interesting discussion. Again, I I just look at it from a, a, a place of, I don't know where he is. That's that's my that's my view on it. Regardless of the, the drug issues, I just look at it from a place of, I don't know where Conor Ben is. I don't. You can call out all the names in the world, I just don't know where he is. Do I think he's a good fighter? Yeah, I think there's, I think there's a very good fighter in there. I think, there, I think we saw it on Saturday, some very good, some very good stuff. Some very good stuff. Like he won that fight, not comfortably, but he, he won it. Like it wasn't no controversy around it. He won that fight. He won most of the rounds, and he went twelve rounds as well. And he went twelve without blowing a gasket. And he throws a lot of punches in every round. So there's clearly a very very good fighter in there. I just don't know where. I don't know where he is. I don't know. Like I don't know who the European champion is. But would Conor Ben beat that guy right now? I have no idea. So, um, yeah, interesting what they do with him next. Eddie's talking about Eubank. I don't know, man. I'm not quite sure. I think we should chill on that. Um, Amma Williams looked really good against Mbumbo Yasa. Mbumbo Yasa taking a fight on very late notice. Eddie Hearn, I think you probably you might have heard it on the broadcast. Eddie Hearn said when he matched the fight or when they realized that Mbumbo Yasa was coming, he looked on his Instagram and he realized that Mbumbo Yasa has been chasing him or messaging Eddie for the last three years, begging for a fight. And for a guy to take that fight on five days' notice and give Ammo some rounds, some good rounds, I think he deserves another opportunity at 154 with a good camp. I'd like to see him at 154, six-week camp to see what he can do. As for Ammo, Ammo's clearly ready to go now. He's ready to go. Um, the world champions in that division are Alan Canali, Lara, who fights Zarafa, I think, they, and who else? And... So is it, and Charlo, did I say that? Yeah, I think I did, Charlo. So Jamal Charlo, Alam Canali, and Lara at the moment. He is ranked number three in the WBA, which is what Lara's belt is. He should just wait for that. I mean, all this talk about him versus Hamza Shiraz and his five versus five, yeah, I, would, I, would, look, I wouldn't mind seeing it, but if I'm Ammo, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of there, I'm ready. I'm ready to mix it with the very, very elite at 160. And I think he will. Um, credit to um, Johnny Fisher, by the way. He brought over like two, three hundred to Vegas. Um, who saw him fight for two minutes and ten seconds or wherever it was. <laughs> but they weren't moaning. They didn't mind. But um, it's got a following. To bring that many over. I mean, that, no, not many people do that. You know, that's not easy. to bring. It's not like you bring them over for a world title fight. You bring them over for what is going to be a demolition job. Um, six weeks after Christmas. That's that's pretty good going, pretty good going indeed. Now I haven't seen, I've only seen highlights. I haven't seen the the Boatsi Aziz fight in full. I've seen highlights, and the highlights that I show, saw did show that Boatsi just was on top for most of the fight. Aziz had his moments, had some good moments. Boatsi just looked a bit, bit bigger, bit stronger, more skilled, which is the kind of the, I think the what everyone thought going into it. Everyone thought Aziz would. Just based on work rate, Aziz might cause him problems. But Boatsy got the job done. I've had a look at the, the slips, the knockdowns. I mean, there were punches. So you can understand why the ref would do that um, and, and, and start counting. It's, I don't know. I don't know. Um, regardless of that, though, I thought Boatsy had done enough to win that fight based on the little highlights that I see. I will watch it again in a minute. I just hope now that Boatsy goes. That's it. It's a career best win, I think. For Boatsy, go. It's time to go. It's time to go. Call them all out. Um, if we can get the yard fight, please, God, let's do it. If we can get the Callum Smith fight, potentially, please, God, let's do it. I mean, Bivol Paterbi have a fight in, in June. So if he can have one, if he can have one more in 
let's say April, no injuries, hopefully, fingers crossed, he's okay. April, May, May, let's say May. And then wait for the winner. I know, it's, I'm asking a lot here, but then wait for the winner. But why is it? He's got to do it, right? Wait for the winner, sorry, Bivol Baturbe. If he's got to do it, let's do it. Let's see. I, I mean, I like Boats, I'm a big fan. I just want him to, to really test himself against the best. If you come up short, not a problem. Not a problem at all. Yard came up short, not a problem. Smith came up short, not a problem. Not a problem at all. As for Aziz, um, wouldn't mind seeing him with Craig Richards. I think that's a good fight, right? Or we can go international. Um, but I like that one. I mean, look, what well unto Aziz. I mean, you know, again, I just spoke about Conor Ben and taking that traditional route. Aziz has done all that. Southern area, English, um, uh, British, Commonwealth, European. He li So you know exactly where he is, fringe world level. No arguments. That's that's exactly where Aziz is. And you know that what's where he is because he can show you the collection of all the belts he's won and he's picked them up the right way. And I love I love that about him. And so hopefully he's still, he'll have the appetite. He'll be upset, obviously, to lose his O, but he'll have the appetite to rest up and come again and um, he'll get a big fight. Um, ben Whitaker. Ben Whitaker is getting a lot of stick for his showboating. And um, look, British fight fans clearly do not like that kind of shit. They do not like, American fight fans do not mind that shit. British fight fans, what are you doing? That, that's kind of their response. I don't mind it and I don't necessarily like the stick he's getting. I'm of an age, obviously I'm 42, gonna be 43 soon, you know, 43 next month, ow. But anyway, um, I'm of an age where I remember Prince Nassim coming up, fighting bums and doing exactly the same thing. Prince Nassim Mohammed is lucky, going by today's standard, that there was no social media when he was fighting because he would have got destroyed for doing it as well. Prince Nassim, Chris Eubank Jr. used to do it. Sorry, Chris Eubank Sr. and Jr. <laughs> Chris Eubank Sr. used to do it against bums. Showboat, take the piss. Take the piss out of him. Uh, not to the level that Ben Whitaker is doing, but Prince Asim Hammer did against bums. Now, some of you will say, yeah, let him do that against the top guys. Let him, and he will. Now, whether or not he'll win is a whole different discussion, right? I mean, we saw Prince Asim Hammer fuck about and try and do that with Barrera, and Barrera shut him down. And you know what? Ben Whitaker could get shut down. But for now, this is his style of boxing. He entertains. You're going to tune in to either love him or hate him, right? You're going to tune in to see him win or get knocked the fuck out. And that's better than not tuning in at all. I do not mind it. I'm not against it at all. I'm not. I think he's super talented. I think he will go all the way to the top. I really do all the way to the top. And I think that fighting style is clearly just his style. That's just the way he wants to fight. And um, look, boxing's all about putting bums on seats and entertaining people. This kid does it. This kid does it. And again, I go back to the Prince Asim Hamad thing. And the reason I go back to Prince is because Prince was my favorite fighter. And that's all he used to do. <laughs> he used to just take the piss out of people constantly, constantly. And you know what? People tuned in again because they either wanted to see him win or get fucking chinned. And he rarely got chinned. He rarely got chinned. Don't get me wrong, he stole... Got his ass put on the ground a few times, but he got up, knuckled down and fought that way again and still won his fight. So like, I'm not too against it. Um, I, I understand why some people are, but I'm not that against it. Um, Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk. You know, you, you fight fans, not you guys, you guys are kind of smart, but some fight fans are crazy. I saw some shit, people saying he cut himself. <laughs> like he cut himself to get out of the fight. Are you guys crazy? Are you guys crazy? Do you, do you think Tyson Fury is scared of Alexander Usyk? Like, he's not scared. Fighters are completely different from us, you know. From us mere mortals, fighters think completely different. And even if he was, let's just pretend Tyson Fury is scared of Alexander Usyk. Let's do that for a second. Even if he was, the fact he's going to get paid, I heard, around 75 million from it, would even nullify that fear that he has for Alexander Usyk. I, you guys were talking like Tyson Fury pulled himself out of the fight because he was just, come on man you're better than that don't get me wrong Tyson Fury chats a lot of shit trust me I've spoken to him I interviewed him a couple of weeks ago I get it but that guy ain't scared of nobody I'm just not accepting it I'm just not accepting it there isn't there isn't a, a, a bone in his body that is fearful of Alexander Usyk could he lose to Alexander Usyk yes of course he can I think it's a 50-50 fight but don't, all the nonsense about he, you know, <laughs> he did it on purpose. Again, even if he was scared, 
Even if Tyson Fury was frightened to death, 75 million will get him in that fucking ring because they're fighters. They're not us. We, it, it's hard for us to kind of understand what these people think and go through. He's a killer. They're fighters. And they're going to fight again May 18th. Oh, again. They're going to fight May 18th. And fingers crossed, nothing happens this time. But yeah, I'm not having all the Tyson. And I'm not even a big Tyson Fury fan. I'm, I'm sticking up from like his fucking AJ. But I just know he isn't scared of Alexander Usyk. I just know he isn't. No way. I've been around him. This guy, nah. I'm, no, no. Nope, 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 nope. Couldn't Usyk beat him? Yes, 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 yes. Is he scared? Nope, no, no, no. Anyway, the fight has been rescheduled for May 18th. So it's not... It's not too long to go. By the way, did you see the uh, the video of how the, the cut occurred? That motherfucker elbowed him clean. Like, boy, I don't know. That That's like, mm -mm. they should have fucked him up. That elbow was brutal. Like, brutal. Do you see it? What do you think, Tyson? And someone said, <laughs> again, it goes back to how crazy people are. Someone said that Tyson Fury told him to elbow him. And, oh, how how random that they're filming sparring. All for, all, I'd say not all. 90% of sparring is filmed. What, what are we doing? Like, come on, conspiracy theorists. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, we're also going to talk about Bivol Baturbi. Have it done. Woo! June 1st. Jeez. Team Bivol all the way. But, boy, it's a big one. This is a big one. Number one versus number two in any order. Unbeaten. Uh, I don't know where you guys have him in your pound for pound rankings, but we are talking top six, top seven, pound for pound, for maybe both of them. Do you know how good a fight this is? Jesus Christ. One puncher, one mover that can punch as well a little bit. This is a great fight. You know, I was just thinking about this, yeah? You know, like, I don't think there's ever been a time. Did I say this the other day? If I did, apologies. I don't think there's ever been a time in the history of the sport where potentially... I know Jaron Ennis has the IBF belt now, but play this game with me. Where potentially the top five or six pound for pound could all be undisputed, unbeaten fighters. You know how crazy that is. So, sorry, well not unbeaten, but undisputed, apologies. So Crawford number one, right? Just just play the game with me. Because he is undisputed as far as I'm concerned. Jaron Ennis didn't win that belt in the ring. Crawford. Uh, number two, Inoue, undisputed. Um, number three who's number three in people's pound for pound rankings don't know who have they got uh, Usyk it's going for it's going basically could be undisputed um, Bivol Paterbiev could be undisputed you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a ridiculous lineup I've missed someone out Canelo it's a ridiculous lineup it, it's honestly ridiculous um, yeah insane insane and then it could have been Haney obviously he's gone up but yeah crazy like it's it, it, like the people that are in that pound for pound, but what they've done, astonishing. Honestly, astonishing. All right, anything else to talk about? Um, a good fight uh, announced, Fabio Wardy, Fraser Clark. They did a little face-to-face. -face. That's a good fight. No idea who wins that one. I think I'm going to edge Fab just, like, just very tight. I think uh, Boxer are going to announce uh, Jack Cattrall, Josh Taylor as well. Um, the zone didn't deem that a pay-per-view fight. I think they've messed up here just because I think it will turn into a pay-per-view fight. I think as soon as these guys do their first press conference and their first face-off, which I'm not doing, um, it will turn into something big. And I think they've kind of messed up on that one. I, I do think that's a pay-per-view fight. And it's a shame. Obviously, it goes uh, to Sky. But oh, it's not a shame. A shame for me because I'm not working on it, but I'll still watch the fight 100%. It's going to be a great fight. Um Anything else? Um, so a quick butchers. I spoke to um, what's this? Lee Wood, Josh Warrington rematch no longer in play for May team at the City Ground. Plans currently on hold. That's not good, is it? That's not good. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. The Bivol Baturbia fight. Um, that's where Matram are going to do their five versus five. That's going to be the undercard. Man, if you're a Matram or Queensbury fighter, you're on the phone to Addy, uh, sorry, phone to Addy, phone to Eddie and saying, come on, get me on this card. I need to get on this card. Um, hey, 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 very quickly on this kid, Khalil Ko. You guys see him, 175 pounder. 
um, dropped uh, Asuna um, three times, three times, three times. Asuna came into that fight as this killer, right? 20 fights, 20 wins, 18 knockouts. Khalil Cohen, I think that's his ninth professional fight. Could be a future problem at 175 pounds. Very patient with his work. Looks good. Looks really good. I like him a lot. And um, there's a lot of talk at the moment about Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney um, potentially happening in April. I did ask Eddie about it. They said they're still trying to make the fight, but I think Oscar reached out and offered Haney money. Haney says he wants more. I don't know, man. I don't know all these kids. Eh? I mean, they want, again, I've said this already and I'm going to say it one more time before we wrap up. All these kids want Floyd Mayweather money without doing Floyd Mayweather work. Like Floyd Mayweather guaranteed you at one stage, that motherfucker guaranteed you between 750,000, and I'm not talking about the big fights, 750,000 to a million pay-per-view buys. Guaranteed you. So it's easy to say, okay, he's worth 15 to 20 million because you know what? He will sell at an arena, easy, and he guarantees us, guarantees us 750 to a million. And he's the best seller of a fight that has ever been. Right, these 24 sevens were fucking sensational. So he guarantees you everything. These guys want Floyd that, they want that Floyd money that Floyd was getting paid, that, that guarantee of nearly 20 million. They want that without everything else I just mentioned. Okay then, uh, guys, girls, 